Girlfriend Therapy Radio. I'm your host, Kwanzaa. I hope you guys are having an awesome day on this Thursday. Um, I'm so excited about the show tonight, guys. I know I say that every week. And it's true. Every week, I am excited about Girlfriend Therapy Radio. But I am super excited about tonight's topic, um, where I will be talking about the point of purpose. And I'll tell you guys, when I thought about this topic, it actually just came to me yesterday. And I shared a little bit about it, like, on my, uh, my Facebook page. If you guys are following me on Facebook, if you're following me on social media, if you're not, I don't know what you're waiting for. You guys should look us up and follow us, Girlfriend Therapy, Inc., Girlfriend Therapy Ministry, Girlfriend Therapy, everything on every social media platform. But in any case, I did a video earlier, and I was sharing um, how I came up with this topic or how this kind of came up in my spirit. And um, when I thought about the topic, the point of purpose, um, I thought about it in two ways. One of the ways was, you know, obviously you you think about what is the point of purpose? So you could ask the question that way. Um, But another way that I thought about it is what does purpose point to? And for me, I think that's an even more poignant way to look at it as you wonder, what is it that purpose points to. And so um, I just want to, you know, just share a little bit about the point of purpose with you guys for this next hour. And so I was listening at, uh, actually, I I think I quoted a statistic earlier, and I have to say that that statistic was inaccurate. So I have to clarify, I think I was leaning more, you know, more, more um, uh, with the heavy side of it. And I think I quoted or, uh, yeah, quoted 90%, but it was actually more along the lines of 75%. And that 75% is the uh, percentage of people who don't believe that they have a life purpose. I thought that number was astronomical. I thought it was, you know, obviously um, large at 90%. But I think even 75% of people not believing that they have a life purpose, that is a huge number, guys. I mean, I, I I still can't believe it. And I still think about what does that mean for those 75% of people who don't believe that they have a life purpose? It's, um, it's, you know, it's basically saying that they, they, uh, they, that they believe that life is just by chance, you know, that um, they just believe in, you know, in serendipity, that things just happen in some miraculous kind of way just because. And they don't really believe that they were born with a purpose and that they're here for a purpose. Um, and that's why, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I'm sitting here drinking tea today, guys, but my throat is still a little, a little sore. <clears throat> excuse me. But as I uh, kind of studied that statistic a little bit more, I kind of found that it was kind of unfair. And the reason that I thought that this statistic statistic was unfair is because um, there is a huge percentage of people who, who sadly, you know, their reality reality uh, doesn't allow for them to have, you know, the luxury of thinking about life in, in a, a purposeful way. And what I mean by that is there are a lot of people who are just living their lives day by day, and they're just trying to make it. And they're not thinking of their lives in terms of um, the experiences that they're having and how that affects to a, how that um, connects to a larger picture, how that plays a part in God's biggest purpose and plan for the world and and life and people. Um, They really don't have that perspective. And so, In that regard, there are a lot of people who just don't think that they have a purpose in life. They feel like their situation is their situation, and, you know, uh, a lot of times they feel bogged down by their circumstances. They feel uh, like this is the, like their, you know, their life is in ruins even based off of, you know, what their situation and circumstance looks like. Um, Excuse me. And, and in fact, their life is just so difficult that it's hard for them to even imagine that there is purpose in the life that they're living. Um, when I was thinking about this topic, I actually thought about the book um, Man's Search for Meaning and uh, the book written by Victor Frankl. And if you guys are familiar, this was a young man who was actually a, um, um, a Holocaust survivor. And he wrote this incredible book, Man's Search for Meaning. Um, and I wanted to share a quote with you. Uh, like I said, there are some people who don't, don't even feel like their life um, warrants um, or that they live a life that is, um, or I guess that warrants uh, a purpose or, or a live a life that some kind of way exemplifies or personifies purpose. And so I want to share this script, this uh, quote from Victor Frankl from his book, uh, Man's Search for Meaning. And he writes, 
Man does not simply exist, but always decide what his existence will be, what he will become the next moment. And it says, by the same token, every human being has the freedom to change at any instant. I think that quote is so important, especially to the person who is probably listening to this, uh, this broadcast and thinking, you know, I'm just here. I'm just trying to get through the day. Nothing I do matters. I'm just trying to survive. Um, I want you to understand, you know, Victor Frankl, he was someone who lost, I mean, almost his entire family. I think he lost his mother. I think the only one that survived was like a sister. He lost his mother, his wife, his brother, like everyone he lost, um, you know, during the Holocaust. And for him to be able to take this perspective, that's why the book is so phenomenal, because even in the midst of his circumstance and all that he had lost, all that he had seen to have lost, uh, he was able to write this incredible book and talk about, you know, man's search for meaning and really find um, something powerful in even the, the most grim existence. Um, and I'm going to read that quote again. He says, man does not simply exist, but always decide what his existence will be, what he will become the next moment. And says, by the same token, Every human being has the freedom to change at any instant. I love that quote, guys. Um, in fact, I might even post it on my, um, I think I'll post it on my social media. I'm trying to get a little more, um, I guess get a little more diligent about posting. So I may post that quote, but I think it's a really, really important quote and maybe one that you would have to ponder a little bit. So I'm definitely going to post it. So for tonight, the point of purpose. Um, again, I said, you know, you can look at it two ways. You can ask yourself the question, um, what is purpose connected to? And you can also ask the question in, in, in the other terms, why purpose? And so the foundation scripture that I'm going to talk to tonight or that I'm going to share tonight comes from Ephesians 1 and 11. And it says that all things are done according to God's plan and decision. And God has chosen us to be his own people in union with Christ because of his own purpose based on what he had decided from the very beginning. Again, that's Ephesians 1 and 11. And it says that all things are done according to God's plan and decision. And God has chosen us to be his own people in union with Christ because of his own purpose, based on what he had decided from the very beginning. So purpose simply defined is the reason for which something is done or created or the reason why something exists. And looking at it from a biblical perspective, uh, we can say that purpose is what God intended for you, what he, had, what he had in mind when he created you, and what his plans are for you. So we can look at that definition uh, in terms of purpose. And one of the things I say often is that God has a plan for you. He created you on purpose, that, uh, meaning that, you, that, that um, you are not a mistake. Some people feel like that they were a mistake. But uh, I always say that God, cre God uh, created you on purpose, meaning that you're not a mistake. He created you for a purpose, meaning that there is a problem that you were created to solve. Like you are the answer to a problem. And so that even in that, there is purpose in you. Um, and then last, I always say that God created you, I, mean, I always say he created you uh, on purpose, with, uh, uh, for a purpose, and with a purpose. And um, created you with a purpose, meaning that there is a reason for you being here. Uh, you are a, you are like a unique piece to a puzzle. And so when you think about that, and you think about you, just your individual self, and how God has how God seen you, how he uh, how he crafted you, how he made you, he made you to be an answer, or made you in response to a specific um, you know to a specific issue, to a specific thing. Um, I love the scripture in Jeremiah 29, 11, and it says that, um, uh, that uh, what, you, what God said to Jeremiah, he said that before, um, he said, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So God has a plan for you. God has a plan for you no matter where you are, no matter where you are in life, no matter, even if not, not even, uh, it doesn't even matter if you've not yet identified for yourself what that plan is. I want you to know that God has a plan for you and that he created you on purpose, for a purpose, and with a purpose. So that means that you are, that you are purposed. <laughs> God created you with purpose. I think that, um, 
like I said, I was doing a lot of reading and a lot of, you know, just kind of researching as I was getting, as I was preparing for tonight's topic. And one of the things that I, I, I came across, one, I was surprised to find that there were so many other, like I thought this, type, this title was unique, um, The Point of Purpose. I was super uh, excited when that dropped into my spirit. I thought it was something, you know, unique and different. But when I Googled uh, just The Point of Purpose, other articles came up. And so, of course, I didn't read them because I didn't want to get, uh, uh, taint my thinking with regards to the point of purpose. But I found it interesting that so many articles came up with regards to people trying to figure out what their purpose is. Um, you know, and it's like, it really is like one of life's biggest questions. Like, what is the purpose? Not just the purpose of life, but what is your purpose? What is, why did God create you? Why did God create me? That's one of the life's biggest, uh, you know, one of life's, um, uh, biggest questions, and it's one of the most asked questions. What is the purpose of life? What is my purpose? Um, and I was reading uh, one of the, the, the one of the articles I actually did come across, and it had, uh, and it well, some of the thoughts that inspired me. Um, what I realized is that you know it, it says that uh, people who feel inspired and have a sense of knowing um, that they were created for a reason. Um, feel like there's a greater purpose for their lives. So they said when you have a sense that, that there is a bigger part, like you've been created for a reason, then you have a, a better sense of, um, uh, of purpose, like you have a better sense of purpose for your life. Um, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to, it's like as I'm saying it, I'm trying to, I'm trying to picture it. And so people who feel inspired and have a sense of knowing that they were created for a reason. So if you know that, that I am created for something, I am created to solve something, I am created, if you just start thinking about yourself in this way, and you guys know I'm very visual, so sometimes I'll say something and then I, I have to paint the picture in my own mind. And so, um, and when I do that, I'm like doing it in real time. <laughs> so, you know, you guys will hear kind of the pause as I'm painting this picture. But it says that people who feel inspired and have a sense of knowing that they are created for a reason, they feel like there's a greater purpose for their lives. So when you ask people, or when you have, when you talk to people who are, um, uh, uh, you know, when, when they're feeling hopeless, you know, a lot of times they're feeling hopeless because they can't identify a purpose for their life. They don't understand uh, why, I'm, why they're here and they feel like they have nothing to contribute to life. If you think about people who contemplate um, taking their own life, it comes from that same kind of energy, not feeling like they have a purpose not feeling like they have anything to contribute to life. Um, if you've ever known someone, and I've, I've, I've heard of, and, um, and I can think in my mind a couple, a couple of people that I know who have taken their own life, but anytime you've ever heard of someone who, uh, you know, committed suicide or who took their own life, one of the things that people often say about them is that they seem so happy. And one, I, I'll say this, that happiness is not enough to stop someone from committing suicide. Happiness is like an emotion. It's up and down. Um, and, and really, true happiness, just like I said in this uh, earlier quote, true happiness really comes from uh, feeling like you have a life of purpose, feeling like there's meaning and purpose to your life. That's where true happiness comes from. And, 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 and living a meaningful life or feeling like you have a meaningful life, um, unlike, un, unlike happiness, um, you know, meaning is not, a, it's not an emotion, you know, meaning is a, something that you, uh, something that comes from, uh, you know, it's something exciting that's happening, something external. Meaning is really understanding for yourself that there is purpose, um, that there is purpose to your life. And so meaning isn't something that you either have or don't have. Meaning is like, it's a, it's a state of mind. It is, um, it is an approach to life. Uh, so, so when you understand and recognize that you have meaning or even believe or feel as if you have meaning, you are taking a different approach to life and you have a totally different mindset. A lot of what people struggle with is, you know, it is their mindset. I remember reading a quote somewhere, um, like, like this huge percentage, and I'm horrible with percentages tonight, guys, but I think it's something like 90% of, um, the things that you worry about, like, never happen. And so a lot of times, in our, if we're just relying on our own thinking and our own minds to keep us happy or, to, you know, to manage our emotions, then a lot of times we'll kind of disappoint ourselves. And so 
Meaning really is a mindset. It's taking a posture um, and an approach um, and an approach to life. Uh, and another quote that I read, it says that those who feel that life is good and have a purpose live longer. I can completely see that. You know, if someone feels like they are contributing to something, um, that something that they're doing has purpose, that they that there's a reason for them being there. Um, they, you know, uh, study shows that they actually live longer. And so, just a little, a uh, little tidbit about uh, li- living a meaningful or, or uh, yeah, living a meaningful life. Um, there are like three factors that you take in consideration. Um, one is purpose, of course, that's what we're talking about tonight. Um, and purpose is the degree to which you feel directed and motivated by a valued life. And so if you feel like there is purpose in your life, then you have direction, you feel motivated, you feel valued. Um, another factor that plays into have, living a meaningful life uh, or looking at your life as if it's meaningful is comprehension and understanding. Um, and we talked a lot about understanding over the past few weeks, but comprehension is the ability to make sense of and to understand your life. So when you recognize that there is a purpose in your life, that there is something in you that is necessary, that there is a point to, uh, you, you know, your existence, and you understand that, then that in and of itself lends itself, um, uh, you know, to a more meaningful life. Um, and then the last part is mattering. You know, everybody wants to matter. In fact, um, one of uh, Maslow's hierarchy of uh, laws, hierarchy of needs is the need to belong. And so when someone feels like they matter, it's the belief that their existence is significant and valued. And unfortunately, there, those are some of the key components of when you talk about living a meaningful life. If a person doesn't feel um, like they have a purpose, if they don't understand that they have a purpose, if they don't identify with that pur- this purpose, and if they don't feel like they matter, then they will come, you know, ultimately live or feel like they're living a meaningless life or a purpose, purposeless life, um, and, and taking into consideration, again, the person who uh, may commit suicide or, you know, contemplate taking their own lives, there is a level of hopelessness or a feeling of hopelessness that is telling them that they don't matter. And, uh, and that's like, you know, again, when we talk about a meaningful life, it's a mental a posture, um, a, a mental stance that you have to take that, um, or a, a mental approach that you have to take a mindset. And so when we talk about the point of purpose, the first thing I want to talk about is why purpose. I just want to share with you guys a couple of reasons why purpose is important. If you you don't have reasons for yourself or if you need to be convinced that it's important to have purpose, and according to the statistics that says that 75% of people don't believe that they have purpose, I would say that it's probably important for you to say why purpose is uh, necessary. so when you understand when, when purpose is understood, when you understand that you have purpose, it's a driving force for your journey. You guys remember I talked about the spiritual journey, and I talked about um, when you're going somewhere and when you're journeying. If you don't have a destination, if you're if you're journeying aimlessly um, and you don't have a destination, then you can get detoured. I talked about all that stuff in the spiritual journey. But one of the things with purpose is you is when you understand it and it's the driving force of your journey. And when I think about that, I think about, for me, I, I feel like I, I, I know without question that I have, that I have a purpose for being here. And I knew that even before doing this study and, you know, preparing for tonight's show, I all, I've always known that there are some bigger reason, some bigger purpose for my life. And so I've always navigated my life um, in that way, and I think I shared a little bit on my, my video or that I did earlier on uh, social media, I kind of talked a little bit about when I understand that I have a purpose, then in, I, I just move differently. I, make, I, I decide, I make decisions differently. Um, one of the things about purpose also is that purpose can lead you to your own authentic mark in the world, and I'll talk a little bit more about that, but when you understand that you have a purpose, you're really looking in the at, at your own, in your own lane, you're looking at the things that you're connected to, the things that's connected to you, the things that you're touching, the things that you've been called to. And we'll talk about being called to things, uh, being called uh, a little bit later as well. But when you understand 
that you have a purpose and you're operating and moving in your purpose, then you can lead your own authentic life, first of all, and you can lead your own authentic mark on the world. Um, also, when you know that you're, uh, when you know that you have a purpose, um, when you know that you have a purpose, you, you know how to get back to it. So even when life throws you a curveball, you know, you're, you're able to navigate back to your purpose. You're able to get back in line. You're, you're able to reorient. Um, and, and kind of get back in line. I always look at purpose as kind of like your North Star. You know, it's like when you get knocked, you know, knocked off your square, as my dad will often say, or as you get uh, derailed or, you know, like, again, life throws you curveballs and you kind of get uh, disoriented, whatever it is. You can look at your purpose um, as a sort of North Star for you where um, if I know that I am created for this and I'm moving in the way that I know that I've been created to move, if something knocks me off, and I'm trying to think of a, an example, uh, if something knocks me off of my path, if you will, then understanding my purpose will help me to get back in line with my path and, and, and uh, get back in line with what it is that I was supposed, that I'm purposed to do. Um, purpose also, you know, it provides meaning, it provides direction, and it provides energy to your life. When you know that you have something that's important in front of you, when there's something that you're supposed to do, you know that it's like you're in everything about you is different. And I'll use an example. I keep trying to think of an example as I'm as I'm I'm, I'm going through these. And I think if I give you an example, it might help a little bit. Um, I remember years ago, I was um, there was a church that my, my husband and I were attending. Well, the family was attending. And I remember, you know, being really involved in a church, and, um, you know, the pastor uh, initially asked me to to lead one of the ministries within a church, and it was like, okay, sure. And uh, so I, I was able to lead the ministry because I understood that it really aligned to what God had already called me to do and understanding my purpose. And I remember the pastor, you know, asked me to lead another area in ministry, and although I was gifted in that area, I had to step back because it did not align with my purpose. And so I remember having a conversation with a pastor, and, and I, I said these words almost verbatim. Um, I said, you know, I understand the purpose that God has for my life. I said, I understand that, my, that I've been purposed to be uh, Quentin's wife. I said, I understand that I've been purposed to be Quentin and Mia's mother. I understand that I've been purposed to, to be a writer. I've been purposed to lead Girlfriend Therapy Ministry. Um, I was like, but this that you're asking me to do, doesn't align with my purpose. And so being able to, to uh, see things that might be good, but it could still be a deterrent from what God is calling you to do. And so when you understand your purpose, like I said, it just helps you to move differently. Uh, it provides meaning. It provides direction. Um, like I said, if you're looking at things and you're just kind of moving whatever way the wind blows you, you know, you'll find yourself derailed and, and truly off your mark uh, with regard to your purpose. And, um, and on the other side, you know, without purpose, you know, you may feel like you're just wandering aimlessly through life. And so many people who are walking around without purpose feel as if they're wandering aimlessly through life. And I'm trying to, like, like I said, I, I can't think of a time when, even when I didn't know my purpose, I knew that I had a purpose. And so I was always in search of, I was always, you know, just listening and, 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 and looking and trying to understand, um, trying to understand my purpose. And when you understand your purpose, you know, you can align your intentions and you can tap into, you know, the truest and, and, and your fullest potential. Like I said, understanding what God has called me to with regards to my purpose I'm able to put all of my energies into that. I'm able to put everything, all of my efforts into um, uh, fulfilling the purpose that God has for my life. And I'm able to influence my prayers with regards to my purpose. And so just understanding, you know, why purpose is important, you know, is important for those various reasons. And also when you understand your purpose, you know, you know what to give yourself to and what to give your attention to. And again, wandering aimlessly, people are giving their, themselves and giving their attention to things that does not resonate and does not align with, um, you know, with their purpose. And they, and they spin their wheels. You see it. I see it all the time. 
uh, and you probably are thinking about, you know, maybe even um, uh, examples in your own life or even thinking about examples in other people's lives that you see all the time where without purpose, they just kind of wander aimlessly, they kind of spin their wheels, um, and really with no direction. And so those are the reasons why purpose, uh, uh, you know, purpose can be a driving force on your journey. You know, purpose can lead you to your own authentic uh, mark or yeah, make, help you make your own authentic mark on the world. Um, uh, purpose can remind you, you know, of where you're supposed to go or where you're headed when life gets crazy. Uh, when you understand purpose, you know, you can use it as your north star to always lead you back to where to your center or lead you back to where you're supposed to be or help you get back on path um, or back on target. You know, purpose provides meaning, direction, and energy to your life. Um, and, and when you understand purpose, you can align with your you can align your intentions and tap into your uh, your truest and fullest potentials. And lastly, when you understand purpose, or lastly, um, yeah, when you understand purpose, you can give yourself and your attention to that which you have been purposed to do. And so um, I'm going to take a quick break. And when I come back, I want to talk about, and I, I'm kind of looking at the time. Time goes by so quickly. But when I come back, I want to jump in on the second part of the question. We talk about the point of purpose. And I want to talk about what purpose is pointing to, what purpose is pointing to, or another way of saying that, what is purpose connected to? So we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to jump right into what purpose is connected to. of the point of purpose, um, and we already talked about why purpose, I'm not going to recount that. So on this side of the uh, show, I want to talk about um, what purpose is connected to. And I truly believe, when, like I said, when this 
strong in my spirit. That was the focus that I initially took on uh, what purpose is connected to. And I truly believe that everything, uh, that the entire creation, that is everything that is created, is connected to God's purpose. Everything that God has created is connected to his purpose. Uh, if you guys think about in the book of Genesis, you know, as God was creating the heaven and the earth, he created everything in response to something. So, for example, he created light in response to the darkness. Uh, he created water and land in response to an earth that was void and without, um, uh, uh, without form. Um, and in response to man being alone, he created woman. So everything that God created was linked um, to his purpose, including you. And so that's the point that I really want people to get. Like I said, when I think about this 75% of people who don't believe that they have a purpose, they just feel like they just really exist, that they are just a product of what their mom and daddy did, um, that they are just a product of that, and don't realize that there is something far deeper, something far greater, something um, more powerful to their existence. And so I want, I want everybody to understand it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter where you come from. I want you all to understand that you are created for a purpose that God created you for a purpose. Um, I love the scripture in Romans 8 and 28. <clears throat> and we're going to talk a little bit about the scripture. It reminds us that God foreknew us, that he predestined us. And so the scripture in Romans 8 and 28, 30, it says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who called according to his purpose. For, he, for who he did, I'm sorry, for who he did for no, he also did predestine to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. It says, moreover, whom he predestined, he also called. And these whom he called, he also justified. And these whom he justified, he has also glorified. Now, I want to read that again because I stumbled over it a little bit. And it says that, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For he who did foreknow them, he also, for them, for, he, oh gosh, for who he did foreknow, <laughs> he also did predestine to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn amongst his brethren. And it says, moreover, whom he predestined, he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified. And these whom he justified, he also glorified. So I want to take a minute just to talk about predestined, called, justified, and glorified, because that's important in this text. So when you talk about predestined, predestined simply means that he decided in advance. So it's saying that God decided on you in advance. And if you guys remember the scripture found in Jeremiah, um, Jeremiah 1, which happens to be uh, the foundation scripture for Girlfriend Therapy Ministry, specifically Jeremiah 1, uh, 5 through 10, uh, happens to be the foundation scripture for Girlfriend Therapy Ministry. But in uh, Jeremiah, um, uh, uh, God says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And he says, before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you a prophet to the nation. So God is saying that I predestined you before you were formed. God said, I knew you. And so we all can take that same language and understand that before God breathed the breath of life into each and every one of us, he knew us. When you talk about what does it mean to know someone, it means that there was an existence, that there was a thought beyond him just breathing that breath into us, that there was an existence for us, that he had carved out a space for us even before we were born. So as he formed us in the womb, he already knew what we would be capable of. He already knew what he had placed inside of us. He had already knew the gifts that he's placed inside of. He already knew the purpose that he spoke for us. Um, and so in, in the book of Jeremiah, he's saying that to Jeremiah. And so it says that, you know, predestined means that he decided in advance. And then we have to look at the word call because it says that uh, who he predestined, he also called. And when you think about called as it pertains to the scripture, um, a call is an invitation given to man by God to accept his appointment, to fulfill his purpose. And so when, when it says that who, he who he predestined, that is, merciful, that is he who he, um, he, he decided in advance to call, he gave a call that, that was an invitation for those who he called to, to fulfill the purpose. 
And then it says that, um, and yeah, it says that um, he also called. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Excuse me. So it says the call is an invitation given to man by God to accept his appointment and fulfill his purpose. A great example of that uh, we can find in Timothy, in 2 Timothy 1 and 9. And it says that the Lord has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. There's that word again, purpose, because of his purpose, uh, because of his purpose and grace. And so it goes on to say that that uh, those who he called, he also justified. And I love that word justify, guys, um, because through Christ Jesus, we were made right with God. So you may be thinking about, um, you know, all the things that you've made, you may have done in your life, but the scripture already tells us that those who he predestined, that is mean, that means who he decided in advance to call, that he already justified us, that he's already forgiven us through the blood of Jesus Christ. Um, and we learn that in, in Scripture um, that we are justified uh, through Jesus Christ in Romans 3 and 28. I think we – did we read 3 and 28? No, we did, right, we're at 8 and 28. Uh, in Romans 3 and 28, it says that man is justified by faith and not by work. So our faith in Jesus Christ is what justifies us, not our work. A lot of people get this twisted, and I think I probably spent the whole show uh, talking about faith. That's like the foundation what I talk about. Um, but a lot of times we think that we can work ourselves to salvation. We can work ourselves to, uh, you know, to, uh, to, to whatever. Um, but scripture tells us that, you know, we are not justified by, uh, that we are justified by faith and not by work. And then lastly, it says that those whom he justified, he also glorified. And glorified is such a beautiful word. <laughs> when you think about glorified, it means that we are elevated by God that we are made more splendid than we would normally be considered. So he had, he, he, he not only uh, predestined us, he, he also called us. That is with the purpose to fulfill, um, or that is the call to fulfill the purpose that he had for us. But he also justified us, um, and then he glorified us. And so understanding what each of these words mean, predestined, um, meaning to, you know, that God had decided on you in advance. Understanding calls, which is an invitation, you know, uh, by God to accept the appointment and fulfill the purpose that he has on your life, um, that we have been justified, which is to be made right with God through the blood of Jesus Christ, and that we are glorified, which means that we are elevated by God, and we are made more splendid than, than we would normally be considered. Now, keeping that in mind, I want to read this scripture to you guys. Or I, I want to read this scripture to you guys again, and I want you to think about the meaning of those words. Again, Predestined meaning that you decided in advance. Call meaning that there's an invitation um, by God to you to accept the, point, the appointment and fulfill the purpose that he has on your life. And justified means that we have been made right with God. And then being glorified means that we are elevated by God. So with that in mind, I want to read this scripture again, and I'm going to try not to stumble over it, so I'm going to take my time. And again, the scripture is found in Romans uh, uh, Romans 8, 28 to 30. And it says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For who he did foreknow, he also did predestine to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And these whom he justified, he also glorified. That, that can preach all day. <laughs> like I can do a total, just a full and complete message just off of that scripture alone, just off of that portion. Moreover, um, whom he predestined, he also called. So you think about what he said to Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you a prophet to the nation. So that means that God had already established Jeremiah into that which he called him. That's such a beautiful scripture, guys. Um, such a beautiful scripture. I, I, can't even, uh, I, I can't even express enough how amazing that scripture is. Um, and despite that, despite that scripture, despite knowing that, uh, that God said that he already called you, that he already predestined you, that, that he handpicked you, he selected you with a purpose, for a purpose, to fulfill a purpose. Despite that, there are still 
people who will feel like they do not have a purpose. And there will still be people who will not fulfill their purpose. And so I want to share with you guys just five quick reasons why people will not fulfill their purpose. And I want you, as I'm talking about these reasons, I want you to really examine your life. Everything that we do on Girlfriend Therapy Ministry um, is really about that self-reflection. It's really about just seeing yourself. Um, and how you are connected to God, how you are connected to the promises of God, how you are in relationship with God, how you demonstrate the faith, how you exercise the faith, how you, um, you know, everything is really about you, where you are, and how you express the faith. And so as I talk about these five reasons why people will not fulfill their purpose, I want you to ask yourself and be honest with yourself, are any of these reasons affecting you and, and you fulfilling the purpose that God has on your life? Are, are you being affected by any of these five reasons? And the first reason, and this is in no particular order, but the first reason that I want to talk about is um, a reason why people will not fulfill their purpose is, one, because they don't believe they have a purpose. So we started off talking about that. If you don't believe that you have a purpose, then you will never listen and tune yourself or even pursue what that purpose is. Like I said with myself, I've always believed that, that, was, that there was some bigger reason, that there was some greater reason. Even if I didn't understand the word purpose, I always knew that there was some greater reason for my existence. I often talk about being a little girl being raised in West Philadelphia, um, playing on a concrete, playing with ants and, you know, the world around me and always being able to just really focus in and zoom in on me and where I was and, and how I fit into the big scheme of things. And I always knew that my existence was bigger than that which I was around. I always knew that. I always felt like there was something more, um, you know, to my existence, something more that I was created for, something more that I was supposed to do. And so, like I said, even without understanding the word purpose, I just knew that there was something more. And so I would ask you, if you're one of these people who don't believe that you have a purpose, one, I want to encourage you um, that you do. I want to tell you that you do. And I want to encourage you to ask God what your purpose is. And not just ask God what your purpose is, but I want you to listen, to hear his response. And not just ask God what your purpose is and listen to what his response is, but I want you to write it down. Write down what you hear. Um, like the scripture says in Habakkuk, you know, um, you know, write the vision and make it plain. Write it down. Write down what God tells you and then start examining and examining your life and aligning it to that purpose, aligning it to what God has called you to do. A lot of times when people ask me, well, how do I know what my purpose is? One of those Easy or, yeah, I'll say easiest way to even begin to understand and identify your purpose is to look at your gifts. What are you gifted in? What are your gifts? I always say that I was born to write, and that gift of writing really translates into me being a communicator. And everything that I do, everything that I do aligns back to that purpose of being a communicator. I think I talked about that when I was talking about, I think I did talk about, did I do a show on communication? I think I did do a show on communication, so I'm not going to rehash that. But write down what it is that God tells you, or what it is that you hear when you ask, what is your purpose? Listen to what it is that you hear and then write it down and then align, begin to uh, align your life to that thing. Begin to see how either you're connected to it or how you suppressed it or whatever it is. Uh, begin to just really examine your life as it pertains to that thing, whatever that purpose is. Um, a second reason that people will not fulfill their purpose is because they look to other people to tell them what their purpose is. So many people get caught up in this where they look at uh, outwardly to try to figure out who we are, who you are. And the sad thing is, is that a lot of times we're raised that way. We're always raised to look at how people are responding to us. So we present ourselves, and then we see how people respond. And based off of their response, we either um, uh, uh, highlight that thing if, it's a, if we get a positive response, or we, you know, we we uh, we quench that thing if we don't get such a positive response. And so, sadly, um, many people will not fulfill their purpose because they're looking to other people uh, to tell them what their purpose is. I never forget a young lady. Um, she was uh, talking to me about, you know, the work that I do with Girlfriend Therapy Ministry, and she, she asked me, she's like, well, why aren't you a life coach? 
I'm like, because that doesn't align with my purpose. You know, if what I do influences people or inspires people, praise God. You know, I, I believe that a part of my purpose is without question is to teach the word of God. And that comes back to the communication piece. But God has not called me to be a life coach to anybody. He's called me to be an example. <laughs> and so if I live my life in such a way that I'm an example to people and people are inspired or encouraged or motivated by that, praise God. But that's not what God has called me to do. Um, and so I don't look to other people to tell me. And that's a, that's a tough thing to do, guys, to not look at other people's response with regards to what you're doing. Because a lot of times we want that external, you know, we kind of want that validation, you know, um, but a lot of times people will not fulfill their purpose because they will either quench that thing based off of what people are responding to, or they may highlight it based off of people's response. And I look at like where we are in social media nowadays and how uh, so many people are so out of character. You look at people on social media, especially people that do like blogs and things like that. A lot of times it comes down to a matter of how many views do I have? How many followers do I have? And they begin to shift and change their message and their Perspective and their purpose, even um, based off of people's ex those external responses. And so, um, and with that, you know, like I said, we either uh, turn up based off of people's response or we turn down based off of people's response. And I love the scripture in Acts, um, and it says that, you know, it is in Christ that we live and move and have our being. It says that we are his offspring. And so we should be looking at how Christ is responding to what it is that we do. We should be listening to, looking to please God and, 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 and not, you know, be pleasing to, to um, you know, people around us, but really listening to what it is that God has uh, in store for us um, and, and fulfilling the purpose in that way. Again, keeping in mind that everything that is created is linked to God's purpose. And so if you're linked, you, you, are, a, you are God's creation, and what he has purposed in you is linked to a greater and bigger purpose. So keeping that in mind, we have to know that we have to look at what God has called us to do in order to navigate and understand our purpose and to fulfill our purpose. Um, so that was number two. Um, number three is uh, number three reason why people will, uh, uh, will not fulfill their purpose is because uh, they choose a purpose instead of listening to what God, uh, listening for God's calling. Just like I said with the young lady that was saying, uh, you know, to be a life coach, that's not what God has called me to do. Like, I, I know that without question. Just like the example with the pastor who, um, you know, asked me to to lead a particular ministry. I was like, that's not what God has called me to do. I look at even my husband and I, you know, oftentimes we're asked, oh, do you guys do marriage ministry? That's not what God has called us to do. There are times in our lives where he's called us to be examples in marriage but not necessarily uh, uh, a marriage ministry, not necessarily. Um, and even and even times he's called us to be mentors in marriage and mentors in relationship. So we can yield ourselves to that because that's a part of our purpose as husband and wife, but God has not called us to a marriage ministry. And oftentimes people will try to plug us into that. And we've often said, that's not what God has called us to do. So you have to have the boldness to say, you know, that this is what isn't what God has called us to do. And so instead of trying to create a purpose for yourself, you have to listen for what God has called you to do. And one of my favorite examples of this, um, I often share this, this story about um, Samuel, and this is when Samuel was first called. And this story, I'm going to read it uh, from the scripture, and it's found in 1 Samuel 3, um, and I'll start with 2. And it says, one night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. Now, before I jump into it, I want to make, uh, just, just kind of um, uh, bring you guys up to the point. So if you guys are familiar with Samuel, his mother was praying to uh, have a child, and she would go to the temple, and she would pray, and she came, ran into Eli, and Eli thought that she was, you know, drunk off of wine or whatever, and she had, um, you know, she was saying that she's been praying to God for a son and that she wanted to uh, consecrate her son to God. And so Samuel was the son that was born. And once he was born, she took him to the temple for him to be raised by Eli. And so now here we are, Samuel's growing up under the, uh, the mentorship of Eli. And so it's found in 1 Samuel, 3, 2, uh, 1 Samuel 3 and 2. It says, one night Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was laying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am. You called me? But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and laid down. 
Again, the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me? My son, Eli, said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And I think that's important. Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Then it goes on to say, um, a third time the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am. You called me? Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. The Lord came and stood there calling as, as at the other time, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And so just to point back to when I talk about, um, uh, you know, not looking at what other people are saying, but really trying to hear from God to understand what the calling is. You have to understand the voice of God. And so that's one of the things that you, you, that you must practice. You have to practice listening, listening to the voice of God. And so when I talked about, you know, people not having a purpose or not believing that they have a purpose, and I encourage you guys to ask God the question, what is my purpose? And then my next step was, you know, to listen for his response and to write it down. Um, as in the case with Samuel, you know, he, God was calling him. And so all of us, there is, I did this really awesome message, if I do say so myself. Um, I think it was called The Call. Uh, and you probably can find it like on the Girlfriend Therapy YouTube channel. But it was a phenomenal message, if I do say so myself, about, um, you know, when God calls you. And it, and it talks about the call, the response. The, you know, it, it's just this really cool message um, that I talked about how to respond when God calls you. Um, and so that was the third thing, you know, you choose a purpose instead of listening for God's calling. That's another reason why people will, will fail in fulfilling their purpose, because they choose something instead of listening for what God is saying. Um, so I would encourage you guys to listen to what it is that God is saying and that you not choose it yourself. Um, a fourth reason why, yeah, a fourth reason why people will not fulfill their call um, is that they don't trust God's plan for them. And that's a big one, guys. You know, so many, one of the things I say all the time, no matter what it looks like, Lord, I trust you with me. Lord, I trust you with me. If you can incorporate that into your language, I mean, I, there can be times where my heart is racing, my palms are sweaty, my mouth is dry, over, you know, because I'm, I'm so unsure. And I just say, Lord, I trust you with me. So many people will miss the purpose or will not fulfill the purpose that God has for their life because they don't trust God. They don't trust God with the plan that the plan that He has for them. Um, one of the scriptures I want to read, and I'm trying to see. Yeah, I want to read the scripture um, actually from Isaiah 55, uh, 10 and 11, and this is I, I love this scripture so much, guys, and you'll you'll see why once you know once once I read it. But just keeping in mind. That, uh, that how people will miss out uh, and not fulfill their purpose because they don't trust the plan that God has for them. Uh, and so the scripture, again, is Isaiah 55, 10 through 11. And it says, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I desire. Let me see. It will accomplish what I desire and go. I'm sorry. It would accomplish what I desire and, um, and go for the purpose for which I sent it. Let me see. I think I read that right. Let me see. Yeah. So it says, um, <clears throat> Let me read it again. As the rain and the snow come from come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so my word that goes from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish that which I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. That is powerful, guys. Just as God has spoken. Just like we said, before I formed you in a womb, I predestined you, I called you, I justified you. I thought all of these things that God has already spoken with regards to you, or he's already spoken concerning you. 
You have to trust God at his word. You have to know that God created you for a purpose. And because he created you for a purpose, he's already made provisions to that which he's called you to. And so you have to trust God with you. And just like his word says that, you know, his word will not return to him void. It will fulfill the purpose for which um, it will achieve the purpose, achieve the purpose. Um, one of the things that the key takeaway from that is purpose produces. Keep that in mind. Purpose produces. Just like it said that, you know, the, the, the water comes down from heaven. <clears throat> I'm sorry, the rain and the snow come down from heaven. Uh, and, and it doesn't return without doing what it was purposed to do. That is watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. That's what the rain and so that's the purpose of it. And so it comes down and it fulfills its purpose. And, and God, you know, continues to say, so is my word, you know, that it will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. So we have to understand that purpose produces. And so when you understand your purpose, you have to know that it's going to produce something. It's going to yield something. Um, lastly, the fifth reason why people will not fulfill their purpose it's because people don't spend time with themselves. You have to spend time with yourself. We are in such a technological age where we are always plugged in. There's always so much noise. Like, I think the world is noisier and louder than it's ever been. We're, like, we're more plugged in than ever before. And we have to learn to create a space for silence. And when we can silence ourselves and muffle the noise, it allows for, um, you know, for, for our own authentic self to surface. And so learn to spend time in meditation. I talked about that before. Learn to spend time with the TV off, with the music off, with the cell phones off, and just spend time journaling, spend time praying, spend time just listening to hear the voice of God concerning you. And so that's the fifth reason people will never, um, you know, uh, fulfill their purpose because, they don't spend time with themselves. They don't spend time allowing their authentic self to breathe, allowing their, you know, space for their authentic self to breathe. And so the sad reality, you know, as, as I wrap up and kind of come to a close, but the sad reality is that many people will live their lives, just as the uh, statistics uh, uh, suggest, many people will live their lives having never known their true purpose. So many people have gone to their grave never knowing their true purpose. If you are in the sound of my voice and you're listening to this message, it is, this, this is a time, this is an opportunity for you to really yield yourself to the things that God is calling you to do to get to the point where you understand and you know your purpose. Because um, the sad thing is that many people have and will go to their grave, come to the end of their mm -hmm. life, and never know their true purpose. And so just in closing, I want to give you guys one final closing scripture as we close out on the message of the point of purpose. Um, the closing scripture comes from Peter 1 and 2. And it says, I want to encourage you that you were chosen according to the purpose of God, the Father, and were made a holy people by his spirit to obey Jesus Christ and to be purified by his blood. May grace and peace be yours in full measure. And so that's First Peter 1 and 2. And I just pray that for you guys. May grace and peace be yours in full measure. I thank you guys so much for your time and your attention. I pray that this message has been a blessing to you. I'm surprised I got it out in one sitting, so this is awesome. But I'm going to post a couple of quotes because I really want you guys to be able to meditate on the point of purpose and to really identify what your purpose is and align with the purpose that God has for you. I love you guys. I bid you guys God's best blessings. And until next week, blessings. And thanks again for tuning in.